One concept that we have to keep up with when we're dealing with decision making and specifically manufacturing companies is the theory of constraint. And the theory of constraint is that we have a finite amount of resources and that's the constraint of it. And so when we make decisions, we have to keep that in mind. So most businesses face some constraint in terms of available resources, whether it be time, machine hours, uh, employees, whatnot. So when a company's resources are limited in the amount of output that they can generate, the best use of their resources is to make the, uh, to make the product that generates the highest contribution margin per unit of constrained resource. I know that's a long thing, but we'll get to that in a minute with the example. But that's what we're trying to find. That's how we, def we define what we're going to do first, second, third, and so on. Do not produce more products than the quantity the customer demands. That is a very important concept. We're not trying to overproduce the one that creates the highest contribution margin per unit of constrained resource. We're just trying to fulfill the orders of the customer. So let's look at an example of this. So assume a company produces three sizes of products, small, medium, and large. This month, the company has received orders of 400 small, 700 medium, 600 larges. The company only has 1,000 machine hours available. There's our constrained resource. How should a company go about fulfilling the order? Now, right now, as we see, it says the unit sales price is $20 for small, $30 for medium, $40 for large. Uh, and it gives us some unit variable costs. And it tells us how, much, how many machine hours it takes to produce per one unit. Now, if we were only looking at this from the standpoint of the sales price, what one can we sell more, then naturally we would start with large and work our way backwards. However, we're going to look at this from the contribution margin per unit of restrained resource. So let's do that. So first and foremost, we're going to, again, look at the contribution margin per unit. That's the first thing we need to calculate. So we know the contribution margin per unit is the unit sales price minus the unit variable cost. So for small, the unit sales price is 20. The unit variable cost is 18. So that's going to give us a contribution margin of $2 per unit. Medium is the same. It's going to be thirty dollars per sales uh, for, per unit per, for the sales price. Unit variable cost is going to be twenty five dollars, and that's going to give us a contribution margin per unit of five dollars. And then large is going to be forty minus the thirty, which is going to give us a contribution margin of ten dollars. Again, if we're using this, then we would do it in the order of large, medium, and small. However, we want to put this into terms of the constrained resource. So now let's take that and put it and try to see if we can calculate the contribution margin per machine hour. We only have a thousand of them. So the way we do that is we take the machine hours per unit that's given to us and divide it into the contribution margin per unit. So if we have $2 per unit and we know it takes us a quarter of an hour to produce one unit, if I divide $2 per uh, machine, or excuse me, $2 per unit, divide it by 0.25 hours, that's going to give me a contribution margin per machine hour of four, excuse me, eight, eight dollars per unit. If I do the same thing for medium, $5 divided by one hour is going to give me $5 per unit. And then finally, 10 divided by four is going to give me $2.50 per machine hour, should be machine hour. Okay, so now that we have that, now we could actually rate these in order of which we think we need to produce these. So because small has the highest contribution per machine hour, we're going to start that one first. And we're going to do all of those until we have no more to produce that's been ordered. And then we're going to move into medium because that's the second highest. And then we're going to move into large. So what does this look like in terms of actual production for the orders that we've got? Well, we have a maximum number of machine hours of a thousand. We know that it's given to it. So again, first we're going to start with small. So of the small, we know we have an order of 400. And remember, we're not going to produce more, even though it gives us $8 per machine hour. We're not going to produce more than it's ordered. So 400 units times the 0.25 hours per unit it takes to produce, that means I'm going to use 100 hours per unit, uh, or 100 hours total should be, uh, for this order. So take the 100 out of the 1,000, I'm left with 900 uh, machine hours to use. Then I move into the second one, which is the mediums. The medium, I have an order of 700 mediums. Multiply that by the one hour per unit, and that's going to give me 700 total hours. If I take that away from the 900, that means that I have 200 hours left to use to dedicate for the, the larges. So larges, I'm going to have to work backwards on this one because I'm not going to be able to produce all of them. So I only have 200 hours to use. So I know it's going to take me some amount, but i got to figure out how many units I can produce. So how many units can I produce? And it takes four hours per unit to create. 
If I work backwards, then it's going to find out that I can only produce 50 units of this. So this is how I would produce or fulfill the order. I would only be able to produce 400 small, 700 medium, and 50 large. 